All right, so the last thing I thought I would be doing is another unboxing video immediately after the last one. <laughs> So the last thing I got was in September of 2021, which is when things got busy with the Berenstain film strip, as I said last time. And I didn't get anything or any offers for anything for four months. And as soon as I started shooting the last unboxing video, I got two unsolicited emails in the span of 48 hours offering me film strips. One of which is two boxes in excess of 27 pounds total. So some force in the universe, I don't want to say specific one, you know, since we're on YouTube. My deity supernatural power or supreme being of choice apparently recognized that I was behind and somehow put a hold on further donations until I got caught up. So thanks, my deity supernatural power or supreme being of choice. So my wife is here again somewhere. Say hi, wife. Hello. And uh, she loves when I get in lots of film strips, and she was free today, so why not? All right, the first package we got is from Justin Hodge in uh, West Virginia. This is packaged so great. How do I get into it? Uh, he found a, uh, emailed me and found, said he found a, a set of film strips in trying to figure out what they were or remember what they were used for. Doing some research, he came across my channel, uh, which is always nice. Sent me an email, asked if I wanted them. Yeah. I will always take film strips. That's in paper like a school book. <laughs> yeah. yeah, almost. Yeah, it's almost like wrapped like we used to wrap, have to wrap our school books. So this is a, a set 22 from Weston Woods Studios in Weston, Connecticut. Weston Woods was a prolific publisher of children's books adapted for film strip. You might remember I did uh, uh, Good Night Moon, restored and released that June or July of 2021. And I have a ton of these. I don't believe that I have these. We can give you full credit for these only if they're unmarked. <laughs> Maybe I should, uh, should blur that uh, phone number. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if they're still in business. I'm going to guess that doesn't work. Well, it might be somebody else, you know, and the last thing you want is to be blamed for... So, yeah, typically these would come with uh, with teacher's guides that had, uh, you know, photocopy quality uh, reference images of the slides so that you could kind of follow along if you needed to. That looks like you're going to read that over the, 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 the music. Yeah, which is which I don't understand exactly the, the purpose of that because that's what the recording is for. So I don't know. But the Weston Woods film strips tended to come with these. So let's see. We've got the soundtracks on on one record. Okay. These are short stories. Okay. Oh. Okay. And that's in really good condition. Beautiful. That is that is unused. I don't know where this, uh, wow. Somebody was dumpster diving in Weston, Connecticut, I think. <laughs> wow, that is, you don't, I mean, it's got some fingerprints on it, but like you do not see, there's a bit of a scratch, but in, in, in general, you don't see records come out of school districts where they were used and they're in even decent condition like that. And then I don't think there's anything under here. We just kept the film strips. And they tended to come in boxes like this, so you put them on a shelf in a library. Let's get some more light here and see what we got. Okay. I expected them to be red like that. Oh, so red. Yeah, well, it's it. that's your standard Eastman color. It's hard to tell. I've brought... I've brought red film strips like that back from the, back from the dead, back from the red, hashtag back from the red. Um, we could make that a thing, and yeah, open one of those. Um, could be, could be just one. Could be all of them. You never know. But typically, if they were on this Eastman color, nope. yeah. Typically, if they're on Eastman color, uh, they're they're all. At this point, we are lucky that Eastman Color Film is still in one piece, that it isn't 
Otherwise, the condition is great. It's almost like they've never been used. They just aged. Oh yeah. I mean, they're, I mean, they're, I mean, they're, I mean, they're so clean. There's no fingerprints. Right, right, and that and that is very likely what happened. Eastman Color Film just goes red. It was down to the chemicals they used. The dyes fade. The blue fades first, or excuse me, the cyan fades first, and then the yellow, and then the red. Usually, can't tell at this point how much of the cyan is gone, and that come that's. As I've said in other unboxings, that's what determines just how much color you can get back, is whether or not the cyan is, is gone or not completely. But yeah, if these were never used, they would have faded just yeah. as much as if they had been used. I mean, that's brand new. Mm -hmm. So that is, so, it, so the Eastman Color uh, stock on film strips is sort of a, it's sort of bittersweet, or what do I want to say, a uh, catch-22? Is it going vinegar yet? I smell it. No, that's just that's just dust. That's dust. That doesn't okay. smell like vinegar to me. Okay. Um, yeah, you would be reeling if that smelled like vinegar. So this is sort of, um, this is a perfect example of how it, how it, it almost doesn't matter how, how well you treat Eastman Color Film, it will fade anyway. But it's also... It's also weird. It's also sort of anachronistic because this is in like new condition. And if these were, uh, if these had been printed on uh, Eastman LPP stock, the low fade positive print stock, these would look like they were brand new, like we just bought them. We got a uh, date on these somewhere. No, there's dates on the stories, and they're all from the, they're all from the 40s. You know, hard to tell just offhand when this was um, when this was published nothing All right. by nature of the soundtrack being on a record it's gonna be early 70s or earlier because they would have been transitioning to cassettes at that point after mid 70s so anyway let's throw this on the turntable and uh, have a quick listen to it anyway It's a little more warped uh, than I thought it would be, and uh, those fingerprints, uh, something on them. <laughs> but I imagine that'll clean up pretty easy, and uh, the warping doesn't seem to affect the uh, the sound at all. So I think we'll get a good transfer of that. Like I said, I have uh, a bunch of these. The only problem with these is they're too good, and and I end up setting them aside. You know, uh, film strips that are uh, goofy or anachronistic or they have stuff in them that's that's socially unacceptable now uh, end up being more attractive to viewers and potential subscribers you know the channel is still in that growth period where i just can't release whatever or you know do a purely archival first come first serve sort of thing um you know when i released goodnight moon it did great numbers relative to what i normally do but it also pulled in a lot of people who don't understand the film strip format you know and before you can explain it to them they're gone and they've left a rude comment like i tried to show this to my small daughter but all the beeping ruined it entirely for us you know like uh you know, watch the video before you set up a play date with your daughter you know i'm not responsible for ruining your evening if you don't check what some guy posted on the internet before you show it to your three-year-old you know good lord so sometimes it's counterintuitive what works sometimes you get big numbers because a lot of people think it's something else and then they end up hating it you know i'm sure people saw the you know the thumbnail or got it recommended in youtube or saw it on reddit and they said oh this must be like a 
like a modern video version or a real long storybook or or something and they you know they don't understand that I'm preserving film strips and so what's with the beeping take out the beeping and then if I take out the beeping I'm not preserving film strips I'm just you know so story film strips like the the Western Woods ones especially they're such high quality they end up in this weird limbo where they're really good and they're really high quality but there's not enough of an audience of people who who are interested in uh, children's story adjacent media as a as a cultural artifact that they that they sort of get set aside but the goal is to eventually preserve all of this and at the very least get get it all scanned and digitized and up on the internet archive so that you know maybe someday somebody else can <laughs> color correct it and put it together you know, if i get hit by a bus or something but thank you justin for uh sending this in i will endeavor to get it uh preserved as best i can i appreciate you sending this in See, this, this feels like the moving in of the starship, like one of those shots of the Imperial cruiser. Like it just keeps coming. <laughs> we could put the music over top of it. No, we can't. We'd get copyright strike. This is uh, one of two boxes uh, from Jane Schroeder, who is a math teacher, a high school math teacher in uh, Princeton, Missouri. This, this won't exactly fit in the in the shot. Uh, so she got these when the old uh, Princeton Elementary School building was torn down in 2007. Jane and her husband were planning to uh, homeschool their toddler at the time. And the librarian at the school, who I guess was throwing these away, gave them to Jane and her husband to help with that. In an email to me, Jane said, our toddler turns 19 this year, and so we no longer have a use for these. However, they seem, just seem too good to throw out. And I believe if I donated them to a library that they would be lost forever. And in fact, they would. They don't know what these things are anymore, and they don't care. Um, so let's just see what's what's in here and maybe we can drill down so box one holy cow wow oh. yep we have a note okay one second okay we have a note dear mark these were given to me when the old elementary school okay it was demolished in 2007 they look interesting, and I wonder if I could get you to send me a link to your collection or just a DVD of these in this bag. Oh. Um, thank you for preserving this media format. It was a different day and time back then. It sure was. Sincerely, Jane Schroeder. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, DVD, I don't know. <laughs> the uh, Boy, I haven't made a DVD in, eh, I don't know, 10 years. So... But, news lesson dated um yeah that's vec news uh I, I have a bunch of those let me let me just write let me just make a note um on on these just so i um yeah there are more uh here uh vec news i have a ton of these and these were i hope there's more in here because the vec news ones particularly they were unusable without the guide Petroleum like a, in today's living yep but but these were unusable without the guide because they were just sort of a random collection of images that were in the news that week okay so without the guide you wouldn't know okay. yeah um, I'm looking for some i'll preserve them though let's see maybe there's some you know I'm, in the bottom but i'm seeing a lot of um i'm seeing a lot of metal canisters and those are all going to be pre-sound okay. and vec news were non-sound okay. so and then let's go metric how old are these like even the ones in the in the plastic i'm uh are older well i'm, I'm suspicious of how old they are i want to i want to take a look at just one here and try and get an oh idea Lord. our indian neighbors today our indian neighbors today okay well that's that's, that's depending on the decade that could be Teaching resources. See, this is a um, this is non-captioned, so I would this is this has got to have a, a soundtrack somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping the men and building materials <laughs> definitely from a different time. Yeah. Um, 
back to where I found it. I don't see any tapes or records. Um, okay. Maybe in the other box? Maybe. Hang on. Let, let's just uh, take a look. Safe and sound at school. That's an SVE title. I can tell by the catalog number. That's how you know you've been doing this too long. Yeah, a lot of these are... Uh, Early. Well, it's weird how many of these are um, have handwritten labels over what appear to be original labels. I don't understand why that's a why that's a thing unless they're in different containers than the manners at home. That's definitely too old to have a, a soundtrack. They'd already gotten rid of manners by the time there were sound film strips. This is amazing, though. I'll give it to the zoo. Okay. Yeah, I suppose we live on a huge ball, but uh, mm, I have a feeling uh, the information on this one has changed. <laughs> no, nothing? All right. I found Juan Valdez. <laughs> I don't think we can say that. <laughs> uh, life cycle of the monarch butterfly. Okay. That's, uh, again, an SVE title. Wonder. Yeah. Snakes, helpful and harmful. Yeah, that about covers it. Yeah, and no tapes. And like I said, a lot of these are in metal uh, canisters, which is usually an indicator that they're uh, pre-sound. But for the rest of these, I'm hoping that maybe maybe she put the soundtrack recordings in the second box. There is a second box. I'm planning the home. Oh. Yeah, well, I've got a video series on that if anybody needs it. Uh, it ends in failure. But let's uh let's get this other box in. Okay, so maybe This is awesome though. I mean, it, even if I some of these don't you know, can't be restored into full videos like what I do. They should not be thrown away. We'll get them to the Internet Archive. We'll scan them, whatever. They will be for historical purposes. Um, hmm. Okay. Okay, so these are more sets, hopefully with... Ten oh, these are the older, like, SVE boxes without the... No. Those will be, like... These are... Oh, no, but see, that's, I always see that, like, um, whenever I see that good English, it doesn't sound right to me, but it is right. But if you say, I do English good, it's wrong, but I always see that, and it looks wrong to me. Okay, yeah, so these are old, these are mid-60s, if I had to guess, and, um, those are all captioned, and, uh, the Eastman LPP stock hadn't been being used yet. Yeah, but these are all captioned, um, non-sound. So, so these would just from this box would be exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's missing a, or if there were just seven. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. That's why they were missing film strip eight. No, it says seven films right okay. there. So this one said six, but there's only four. There's only four. It said six films on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, a couple of those might be. There's a ton. There's a ton of SVEs in the other box so could be that are there. loose. They might be in there. I don't know. Houghton Mifflin windows on our world. Me. <laughs> okay. Could be about. Yeah. Oh. George learns about schools. John's family, but. Again, there's no tape. No tape. They can't be. Uh, when you get into the plastic, it's uh, the pl when you get into the plastic cans, it's fifty-fifty whether. See, and those don't have captions, which makes me think that that there's a soundtrack that goes along with that, and that it wouldn't make sense if there wasn't. And even if there wasn't a soundtrack, there would be a like a. Like a um, teacher's guide with a script. Like, like a script, yeah, yeah, that you would follow because you just wouldn't like the, the pictures are never self-evident enough. It's unusual. Oh, William Tell. Oh, I love 
By the way, I love the little borrower's card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if if anything makes me feel like uh like an adult with uh with special um uh, with special access to things. It's not the film strips, it's the borrower's card <laughs> and the little pocket that I've always felt like I shouldn't be allowed to touch those. So, oh, we have a tape. Yay. We have a tape. Oh, strangely enough, um if you've seen the unboxing that I just did a week or two ago, I got my first film strips from the uh, unimaginatively named uh, educational film strips of Huntsville, Texas. Uh, don't injure yourselves trying to come up with a company name, guys. Um, but that's the only only the second um, tape from uh, educational film strips I've ever I've ever seen. Here's the little teacher's guide. Yep. I guess this is just a script. I guess you read along with it. Or yeah, it's just it tells you the what's going on in the script yeah. uh, that that's on the tape. And that's the, that's the thing about the other um, about the me film strips. Um, you would think that they would either come with a they would either come with a soundtrack recording or a booklet with the uh, with the thing. So it's hard to know. <laughs> Let's clear the air, understanding air pollution. That looks newer than, oh, 1987. Okay, National Wildlife. And, okay. An educational slide tape presentation. What the heck? So that's not a film strip. That's a... Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <gasps> okay, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'll take that. That oh. is... Okay, so we have a soundtrack tape. So, oh wow, I have vague memories of this being a thing, um, and I actually have a friend who was a Boy Scout troop leader, or worked for the Boy Scouts, and he said this is how the Boy Scouts did um, film strip-like presentations on, on slides. Okay, good, they're numbered. That's, uh, <laughs> I, was gonna, I was wondering how I was going to be able to deduce the sequence, but they're numbered. Okay, yeah, those are in... Fantastic. Oh, uh, wow. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. The blues. Okay. Yeah. So these are in great shape. Yeah. The cyan dye fades first uh, in these old film stocks, and yellow fades second, and then magenta fades last. And by the time the magenta fades, the film's just disintegrating. So if you can see blues and yellows, uh, that is an indication that we're good to go. And the dirty little secret is that slides are just film strips that have been cut up and put in these little, I don't even know what you call them, the little holders, the little paper or plastic holders. So this is effectively the same film that I scan when I scan film strips for uh, restoration. So it shouldn't be uh, a problem scanning these and especially with the, uh, with the colors being good, that'll go real nice and fast. So. What do you got? Amazing. Of course, this is a full, you know, eighty-seven educational booklet. Right. I mean, details on lead and. Oh sure. I mean, all the things and what it does to the environment. <laughs> Mr. Particulates there. I... <laughs> yeah, cougars. Oh, uh -huh. youngster holding nose. Okay. Everyone, take a deep breath now and hold it. What, are we having a temper tantrum? I don't know. Emissions testing. <laughs> Adopt some air. <laughs> I think. Uh, uh, I think the Adopt the Highway program was more successful, but okay. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, look. <laughs> oh, he's coming out of the, uh, well, of course he's coming out of the leaded uh, gasoline pump. Um, that's uh, typical sort of, um, I don't know what you call it, but that's typical of, of art meant to... Heck of anthropomorphism. Well, it's, uh, yeah, but it's typical of art meant to evoke a... Uh, Emotion. An emotion. Yeah. Um, yeah, sort of a, a void comp test. Well, speaking of which, Earth Day every day, you can make a difference. 1990. Slide 1990. 1990. That is, about, that is about when they stopped doing this sort of stuff. Again, educational slide tape presentation. Are these all from National Wildlife? I think so. Look at this. Look, look, yeah. look. What? The eagles. And this is 85, and this is when they were still endangered. Right. By, but now they aren't, but at the no. time, so this is going to be heavy. You no, know, they're endangered. Yeah, no, we they gotta, we, we got to save them. So this will be... Uh, oh, wow. 
predators. They're part of the picture. Oh, wow. <laughs> I feel like I need to make a, 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 a joke about uh, what's his name's attorney. Um, I mean, it's not to catch a predator, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, our minds have been warped by the garbage world we live in. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. What? what? To catch a predator. What? What's going on there? What the... Why is the duck smiling when the coyote is going to kill him? That duck is smiling, but the coyote is also very, very happy. He's You'd like think he would just be like, you know? Like a, he looks like a golden retriever. Yeah, they're just playing a game. Yeah. That's so weird. But, I mean, the, um, what? What the? Oh, gosh, okay. And you notice no one's driving the bulldozer. <laughs> There's no person, so it's not the people that are bad. It's the it's the sentient bulldozer. The that's... sentient bulldozer. Oh, wow. <laughs> what, is that? what is that animal? Where is his eye? Is that his eye or yeah. is that his nose? And no, that, that's his eye, but I don't know that, what that is. That a, that's... Somebody will have to tell us. Yo, put that down in the comments when you, or is it right there in front of us in the text We somewhere? don't know which one it is. <laughs> I have no idea what that thing is, um, but I want one. No, it's got to be some amalgamation of, uh, well, now I'm mad because I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. Oh, okay. Oh, it's an imaginary predator. Yeah, no, I get it now. I okay. get it now. Uh, just in case everybody watching this thinks we're idiots, number one, you're right, but number two, I'll get up, here's some justification for why we were. This illustration goes with this activity called piecemeal predators, where you're supposed to have your kids get out their art supplies and make up their own predator. If, you know, start by asking the children if they can think of some predator parts or other characteristics. Now explain to the kids that each person will be creating his or her own predator. Um, to do so, everyone should pick three or four different predator adaptations from the list you made earlier. Tell these to use the adaptions to draw a picture of an imaginary predator. So yeah. it's got like a shark fin and it's got the stripes uh, of a of a cougar and it's got uh, the paws of a of a big cat and then it's got dinosaur feet and then it's got a big crocodile Wait. tail. This is the episode of Fringe. You're right. Did we just turn into a Christian podcast? I don't know. Uh, soil, we can't grow without it. Oh my, well, I guess not. 1985. And these are all... Yeah. Oop. This one has uh, two sets of... Yeah. Starting to get PTSD from the mid-2000s when I had to do all my parents' slides. <laughs> Keeping them, well, at least these are numbered, right? Um, make it slightly easier. So this one, the, the pad is uh, off, but that's easily fixable. And I wonder if this was the same for all of them. It says, soil we can't grow without it is available in either 35 millimeter slide or film strip format. So these were available in, in film strip format. And I guess why wouldn't you? Because you know, the audio program would be the same and the, f the film that you print would be the same. The only difference would be how you got it processed. Why they decided to go with uh, uh, with this, I don't know. This is your land. Public lands belong to all of us, okay? Yep, again, slide tape, 1985, National Wildlife Federation. Whatever happened to the World Wildlife Federation? They sued the World Wrestling Federation, if I recall correctly, and then sort of disappeared. Oh, mystery tape. The Mighty Missouri, the Middle Years. All right, so hopefully this goes to a, a film strip in the other box uh, that we didn't think had audio, so that's good. Yeah, these are also in perfect shape. So these are all going to be on LPP stock. National Wildlife Federation not messing around with uh, cheap film, apparently. National Geographic didn't either, for the most part. A lot of their stuff was on really good film. This is the guide. It's a little more straightforward. There's less cartoons. Apparently nobody uh, nobody in the office that day who could draw a buffalo. Yep, so it looks like the rest of these are also National Wildlife Federation forests or more than trees. Discover wildlife in your world. Predator one, we got the eagle one. We got the soil one. Let's clear the air. Earth Day every day. And then these, which are older. Um, 
one. This one seems to be maybe missing a soundtrack or a script, and this one has a soundtrack, William Tell. Well, these National Wildlife Federation ones uh, seem like they're going to be great and probably easy to do, but they're in great shape. They won't need to be severely color corrected, which is always a, uh, always a bottleneck. Um, and we've got soundtrack tapes for them, so that's good. So let's just um, let's take a look at this uh, clear the air tape for a second. Let's take a listen to this real quick and uh, see what it's like. Everyone, take a deep breath now and hold it. Breathing is something this cougar and all other animals have in common. You and I breathe about 20,000 times a day, automatically taking oxygen into our lungs and giving off carbon dioxide. But not all animals breathe this way. Earthworms and frogs can take in air right through their skin. And most fish breathe through gills that absorb oxygen dissolved in the water in which they live. Starfish absorb oxygen through the tiny tube feet that lie along the bottom of their arms. You could say that they breathe with their toes. Like fish and starfish, these killer whales live in water. But whales are mammals and breathe with lungs. Here you can see sprays of water as they exhale air through blowholes on the top of their heads. This water spider is a natural scuba diver. It has trapped a shiny bubble of air at the surface to carry to its underwater diver's bell, made of spider silk. All plants, from grasses and flowers to shrubs and trees, need air too. They take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen, just the opposite of what animals do. Hey, are you still holding your breath? Uh, oh yeah, please, for heaven's sake, stop holding your breath. I can't, uh... <laughs> I can't afford to lose a niche channel like this. I can't afford to lose one viewer. So, uh, yeah, don't do what that guy said. So these are in incredible shape. Back in the day when 35 millimeter positive print film was, was reproduced on cheap stock, like a lot of uh, mass-produced slides and especially film strips, the dyes would fade, um, the cyan first and then the yellow and then the red. And in the late 70s, the people who cared what their product looked like switched to what's called low-fade positive print or LPP film. Uh, and uh, this looks like LPP film. You know, all these are absolutely gorgeous. Those are going to look really nice. Is it just me, or do they have a, a slight 16 by 9 aspect ratio to them? Maybe not. They look a little wider than film strip was normally. It could be just the matting but just a real cool opportunity to get into maybe even a more rare still image presentation format for schools uh, than film strip. So I want to say thank you so much to Justin Hodge and Jane Schroeder for all of this media. Just massive donation. Unbelievable. Um, I think uh, the Jane Schroeder, I think 382 film strips and uh, slide presentations, I think, was the total. Unreal. But no donation is too small. Uh, all of this stuff uh, is at risk, and it needs to be preserved, and nobody else is preserving it. So um, don't feel intimidated. Uh, please. Um, uh, we need to preserve all this stuff, so no matter what you've got, try and get it to me, and uh, we, will, we will figure it out. I will do my best. Um, check out my Patreon. I actually went through and uh, opened all of these up and took a look at all of them. Um, not, I can't put it all in the, uh, in the unboxing video, but I'll make it available as Patreon bonus content. So uh, check that out. But for now, we will see you next time. Take care. Thanks for watching.